What, what, what do you think of self-driving cars? Uh, oh, I, well. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm waiting for you to ask me what I think of self-driving cars. <laughs> well, what do you think of self-driving <laughs> cars? I think they're fabulous. Yeah. I think it's an incredibly cool, you know, uh, David Hilbert was asked one time, you know, what's the important, what's the most important scientific problem of the 20th century? He said, getting a man on the moon. And, so, and I said, David, you're a math, why is that such a big deal? He said, because the number of problems that you'd have to solve to do that encompasses so many interesting things. And I think to some degree, the self-driving car is a very similar thing. If you can figure out how to do this detection, how to do this interpretation, how to do sensors and effectors, Plus, the algorithms themselves are terribly clever. Kalman filtering oh, yeah. and all, and newer algorithms than that. I mean, I just am, it's a dazzling, shiny object to me. And I'm like, go Google, self-driving car. Yeah. Well, and I'm with you. I mean, I, and, and it's also a good example of, of uh, what happens with forecasting. Part of what I do is I look for inflection points. I mean, strictly, spe you know, the place on, on a sigmoid curve where it changes direction, which strictly speaking yeah. is not the inflection point, let's call it. Right. And the DARPA robotic grand challenge was a case in point. So the first one, it was what, May 2004, you know, that it was 100, I, I was there, 150 mile race to the border and the vehicle got furthest, only got seven kilometers and it died on the side of the road. <laughs> and it was like Monty Python, most of these yeah. things died to strike you. Yeah. The second race yeah. that three cars finished and 21 out of 22 competitors got farther than Sandstorm got in the first race. By coincidence, it was almost exactly yeah. 18 months later. Then the third DARPA Grand Challenge, the, ro the Urban Grand Challenge, yeah. Air Force Base, we demonstrated that robots may be primitive, but they actually understand the vehicle code better well, than California. This is something I'm very interested in, is when does something that looks very, very hard and has been very, very hard for a very long period of time, suddenly there's what I guess you'd have to call a breakthrough. But I mean, if we go back 10 years ago and we had talked about self-driving cars, the one thing I dare say we would have agreed upon is that it might be possible, it might not, but it's in the way in the far distance. Should have talked future. to me. Did you have that early yeah. on? Uh, and I'm on record. I did an economist debate that. Oh, bravo! That's that. You know, this is uh, before 2020. They're on the highway. And by the way, when we do have robotic cars, we're not going to buy them. We we'll lease them? No, oh, they'd be. You would subscribe to them. Subscribe to them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't right. make sense to have right. this vehicle. I mean, Just, some people. Well, will. I like the idea of stepping out and telling the car go park yourself. But it's happening fast enough that you know, as a Californian, where you know it was our birthright at fifteen and a half to get our learners, yeah. especially as guys. Well, I remember going. But, but here's yeah. just hold stick with me. This is what's really critical: is what is the route to passage for teenage boys in California when the cars drive themselves? We're going to have to take an old Air Force base in the Mojave and get some 1950s cars out there and just, oh, yeah. you know, sort of like in Papua New Guinea when they send the boys out into the wilderness, that this will be how we take our teenagers and give them the route to passage as they have to drive an old-fashioned car.